Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing the brand new version of Checkrain, which was just pushed out earlier this morning, version 0.9.7 beta, which includes, but is not limited to official iOS 13.3 support, as well as initial Apple TV 4K support. We're also going to be touching on Linux and Windows versions. And toward the end of this video, I'm going to tell you guys and show you guys exactly how to jailbreak iOS 13.3 using this latest version of Checkrain. All right, so first and foremost, let's discuss Windows and in turn Linux support because it seems like Linux support is coming first and once that is out, those of you with Windows based PCs will be able to jailbreak that much easier. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it once official support has been added. Also, if you are on Windows, I highly recommend bookmarking our jailbreak status checker page for Windows. Right now you can see that it says no in red. That red no will change to a green yes once Windows support has been added and a new version of Checkrain has been released. So definitely bookmark that page if you have yet to. You'll be notified the very second a new version of Checkrain is out that supports your operating system. And also we are going to touch on, again, Linux in a little bit, but first I really do wanna get into the official changes for version 0.9.7 beta, again, just released this morning. So on their official site, which is linked below, in addition to some resources that I really highly recommend, such as how to update your version of Checkrain, under the what's new section, let's delve into the bug fixes first. Quote, fixes an issue that prevented the GUI or graphical user interface from detecting changes in device modes and fixes an issue that caused the GUI to hang when jailbreaking some iPads. So not only will this improve reliability for jailbreaking iPads, but also for when your device switches between states, for instance, it's booted state to recovery mode to then DFU mode, it's better able to detect those changes. Also, we have here, add initial Apple TV 4K support. So this is fantastic, guys. The Apple TV 4K is in fact included in Checkmate and its CPU is susceptible. But the main issue with the Apple TV 4K and why we haven't had a jailbreak yet is simply because it doesn't have a USB port. Now, others have mentioned that it actually has a USB port built into the Ethernet port. However, that's not entirely true. It's a debugging port that is not full-fledged USB. You actually need something else to get it to work properly. So switching over here to an Indiegogo campaign from Steven Barker, aka Little Steve on Twitter, who is a part of the Checkrain development team. You can see here that he's launched a campaign for a new Apple TV 4K breakout cable board, which is great. Basically, you can connect this board to your Apple TV 4K and then in turn have USB access and DFU access when connected over USB to your computer. So it's pretty great. You're not going to be able to enter DFU mode without this little board here. So if you are at all interested in being able to jailbreak your Apple TV 4K, I highly recommend that you guys reserve one of these things now when they're in early production because they are going to sell out so in incredibly quick. If we look here, this campaign still has 43 days left and the goal is beyond exceeded at this point. So great news if you're interested in jailbreaking an Apple TV 4K, but I highly recommend contributing sooner rather than later if you are. And then getting back to some of these other changes here on Chakrain, quote, purge OTA updates on boot, which is really a very welcomed change because when your device goes to boot up after booting tethered with Checkrain, if it inadvertently downloaded an OTA or over the air update from Apple with inside the settings app, then it's going to automatically delete that and clear that from your device, which will definitely help with stability and prevent issues in the future. Also, it adds support for iOS 13.3, which I'm going to show you guys exactly how to jailbreak with it in just a second. It removes the dependency of Libi mobile device. It also properly handles situations where there's no internet connection available while bootstrapping tvOS, so improved tvOS functionality and support right there, and also adds control center shortcut for the tvOS loader app. Now they also say, just like they said previously, if you are experiencing the negative 20 please re-jailbreak with no substrate mode option checked in the app and see if removing tweaks resolves your issue. So basically, if you try to boot tethered and you get that negative 20 issue after you've already jailbroken, if you've installed any tweaks that are incompatible and in making your device crash, then you wanna enable the no substrate mode when trying to boot tethered and then delete 
or uninstall any of those tweaks that are incompatible. For the known issues, currently they say that the Apple TV 4K will produce a negative 20 error even on successful jailbreak. Remember guys, this is initial Apple TV 4K support and right now we can't even use it because we can't connect to our devices unless we have that little breakout board with the cable connected. Also, for the unsupported platforms, this still says that the beta is only available for Mac OS and work is ongoing for Linux, ETA Sun, and Windows, which will be added in a later release. So they still say the exact same thing, but if we look over at what hacker Luca Tedesco did allegedly say on Discord, he says, quote, actually figuring out how to do the static build without violating GPL has been the most time consuming part of the project for Linux, like we had an implementation ready to ship 10 days ago. So they've had Linux ready to go. However, they haven't pushed it out due to licensing issues. See, if you use anything or develop anything for Linux, because it's open source and it utilizes GPL licensing, any software that you develop all also has to be the same. So that would mean they would have to open source it and they likely don't want to reveal the source code for check rain. So they're trying to figure out a workaround for that. And once they do, you'll not only be able to jailbreak on Linux, but also on Windows through installing either a Linux partition or just booting from a Linux USB thumb drive. So that's fantastic. And I'm going to keep you guys fully updated every single step of the way when we know more on potential Linux and Windows releases, as I've been saying a number of times throughout a number of recent videos. Now let's get into how to jailbreak. Again, I highly do recommend watching my dedicated jailbreak tutorials. Also, there is one listed below as well that shows you how to bypass the unsupported firmware's notice inside of Chuckrain when you try to jailbreak on a future firmware that they don't have official support for because this jailbreak is essentially based on a boot ROM exploit and it can persist through every single firmware release. It can't be patched by Apple so you can kind of bypass Chuckrain and force it to jailbreak immediately because iOS 13.3 has been out for a while but I showed you guys how to jailbreak the very second it was released as opposed to waiting until well now when Chuckrain officially supports it. So definitely check that out as well. Those steps will work into the future. But for now, we're just going to download CheckRain. And once you do download it, I just want you guys to mount the .dmg or disk image file. And once you do, you need to drag CheckRain over into your applications folder. If you already have a previous version of CheckRain installed, you'll receive this message. You need to just replace the previous version that you had installed. And then you need to launch CheckRain from within inside the applications folder itself. And you'll receive this this warning stating that Chuckrain can't be opened because the developer cannot be verified. That's completely fine. You actually need to receive this message. So attempt to launch it from within inside applications first and then just click on cancel and you need to open up the system preferences application. Once you do, go inside of security and privacy and then click on open anyway next to where it says Chuckrain was blocked. So click open anyway and then open to the pop up and then one more time you need to launch Chuckrain from within inside applications and now you just need to connect your device to your computer via a USB cable and I also did notice that if your Mac has USB type C it might not actually work so you might have to utilize a USB A to C adapter and connect that to your USB C Mac or MacBook, simply because again, for whatever reason, it doesn't really seem to play nicely with USB type C lightning cables. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hit start inside of Chuckrain, followed by next. And it's just going to send our device into recovery mode. These are the steps that I'm sure many of you are already well familiar with. So once it does that, it's just again, going to put the device into recovery mode. And then we should be able to just enter DFU mode following the on-screen steps. So just go ahead and wait for recovery mode. It may take a second. And once you receive this screen on your device, you are good to go. So I'm going to close out of Finder and I'm going to click Start. And I'm just going to follow the steps holding down the side as well as the volume down buttons together for a total of about four seconds, a little less than what it says inside of Checkrain. And then of course, releasing the side button and continuing to hold the volume down button. And uh, once it does go into DFU mode, Finder will pop up there, but you can just close right out of it and uh, you can see that it is moving along through the jailbreak process right now and it's actually exploiting the device and it is jailbreaking it. And it's basically done at this point, it just has to boot up and then we can 
actually install Cydia from within inside the checkering application on our device itself. So here we are, let's go ahead and unlock. And I can actually unplug it from the computer. We no longer need it. You only need a computer now when you reboot if you wanna use your jailbreak stuff. Now we can launch up Chakrain and we can tap on Cydia followed by install Cydia and it's going to download the base system, install Cydia and then we'll be jailbroken. So let's go ahead and just wait for this. But uh, like I said, this is just a very, very quick guide. I also recommend watching my more in-depth tutorials, which like I said, are linked down below in the description because I definitely go into all of this in much more detail. So I'm going to go through a complete upgrade just to show you guys that Cydia does in fact work. I'm going to respring and uh, we are on iOS 13.3 as well. So let's launch Cydia one more time and I'm going to scroll down really quick to the bottom and show you that Cydia confirms that this is an iPhone 10 comma three, which is the identifier for the global iPhone 10 running iOS 13.3 with the latest version of Cydia. So I really hope you guys liked this video. Again, just going over all of the changes with the latest 0.9.7 build of Chakrain and also how to jailbreak iOS 13.3 officially with this new version and subscribe for full coverage and to be notified the very second the Linux and Windows releases are out and until next time this is ICU signing out.